views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Welcome to Transformation Talk Radio. And I'm so great to be connecting with all of you. I'm telling you, we are having so much fun, totally so much fun. And we just got to take a sneak peek at our upcoming app for TransformationRadio.fm. I am just blown away. You know, it's not really an app that we wanted to create just to be like, oh, let's just download or stream the show. No, it had to be something that provides people with tools. And Jessica and the team have done a great job. You know, talking about, the, you know, providing people with tools, I am so th- I'm thrilled to have Rebecca Gordon joining me here today again. And uh, the reason, again, is because Rebecca is going to be kicking it up new school at the Women of Wisdom Conference coming up here February 18th. And, you know, what I want to say about it is that you probably heard her on the show before. And so you may remember, maybe have a sense of it. But let me give you another sneak peek. You know, full-time practice, practicing astrologer. Yeah, where? NYC. But how did the path happen? How did this, cre- how did she get created to do this in life? And I say created to do this in life is because, you know, she and I talked about this blueprint before. You know, we have this path that shows up for us. And, of course, she has mypathastrology.com. But when the path shows up, what the heck is our jobs? So when this radio thing showed up for me in 2003 and that wrong phone number that I dialed showed up and I did not hang up, what the heck was going on? Well, not only can she provide answers for that, she's doing a fabulous workshop, um, your cosmic signature, create the lifestyle to suit your soul. And how do you do that and have fun? How do you understand the elements of your chart? How do you use those elements to make good decisions? Because dialing a wrong phone number is one thing. Making a decision to pull out a credit card on in 2003 on an internet-only radio show Literally, that's when the people around you send you to therapy. Rebecca, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Hi, Pat. Thank you. It's good to be back on your show as well. And thanks for that introduction. Well, tell me about what you're going to be doing before we go, because I don't. I know we're going to get going here. But before we do, um, tell me about the Women of Wisdom Conference and what this cosmic signature is going to be like. Tell, tell me a bit about how that works. What do you do to help people with that? Sure. Well, my goal as an astrologer is truly to build bridges and make mm. it extremely relatable to the everyday person. So we're not just speaking to other astrologers about all kinds of mumbo jumbo in the chart <laughs> to make it actually apply to our daily lives and our lifestyle. And it's something that uh, people have been attuned to for thousands of years um, prior. And it's sort of we can say because of light pollution and a whole lot of other things, um, maybe we've grown further from the stars. But the stars are amazing in ways that they can not only show you your birth chart, which, as you mentioned, is a map of what we came here to do, a bit of a map of the soul's intention, 
mm-hmm. but it can also show you uh, what I like to call tipping points, which are yes. points of transformation. So like, for example, the time when you jumped off the ledge and began the show, <laughs> um, that was probably under the auspices of a major transit in your chart as well. So the value in knowing your chart is the value of simply having a roadmap. And life is really much easier when we have a map to follow. And, you know, we all have a road map. So we're all born with one. And really what I, all I do is uh, translation. I just translate what is going on in the skies to English. And I tend to yeah. like to speak in English. <laughs> yeah. reading. You know, you could speak like Jupiter's quincunx, Uranus in the third house. But um, so this, this workshop at the conference is thoroughly going to be in English. And it's going to be for anybody who has no astrological background at all, or, or even advanced astrologers could be welcome. And it's really ways to incorporate and utilize, integrate cosmic cycles in your everyday life. And we'll also be working with each person's soul signature in the chart. And you'll learn how to, a very easy way to interpret sort of the main ingredients of the chart and then to integrate astrology in your life. So I'm so excited to share this because I've really worked worked hard to find easy ways to translate this information to people. And um, this is a full day event. Yeah. And, you, and I, and I takes a full day. I know that when I first talked with you, uh, and certainly we touched upon this, uh, 2003, uh, clearly I dialed that wrong phone number and I did start my first radio show and I did. And, and you know, here's what, here's, what's really kind of interesting. You know, this is what I like to share with our listeners because, I didn't have a background. I get interviewed by people and people ask me, you know, what broadcasting school, broadcasting school did you go to? You know, who, who'd you study with? You know, who were your radio mentors? And I'm like, uh, you know, like my higher power maybe because I don't have that. And so it never makes sense for people um, it, that are in the broadcasting field. I didn't show up to do this to broadcast. I had a business card that said I wanted to reach a million people. And I talked with you about this. And here's my question for you. Six months after I said yes to this, and I was excited about it, and the show wasn't the Dr. Pat show. It was crust busting your way to an awesome life. I came down with a mystery disease, April 1st of 2004, because my body was saying something, especially about the doubt that I started to have. What is the relationship And I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what is a relationship between astrology and our physicality or what then we do to heal? Because I'm telling you that had I not gotten sick, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be here today talking with you and launching a network with 10 new channels. I'm pretty sure. Well, your story is thoroughly amazing, and there's a couple points that come up to me when I'm when I as I'm listening to this. Um, first of all, maybe you know, maybe some of your listeners know that Hippocrates, who is the father of medicine, was an astrologer, and all of astrology, any physicians in ancient Greece, the Middle Ages, and the Renaissance were required to have a background in astrology in order to practice medicine. I mean, not many people learn that in school. People don't mm-hmm. learn that Hippocrates and all of these people were astrologers and Plato. But this has been something that's been um, like in the earliest beginnings of of medicine and medical practice. Mm-hmm. Um, astrology was an innate part of it. So, you know, it's funny that people think now like horoscopes, uh, astrology, horoscopes, and it's these sort of like personality descriptions. And yeah. That's actually a very new advent that started in the 1930s during the Depression. People needed hope, and (laughs) horoscopes began as a way to give people hope. But prior to this, uh, astrology was seen much more as um, a health-related science and Mm -hmm. relevant to the weather, health, um, the the states of uh, different countries, and things like that. Um, So your body... In fact, each part of your body is ruled by a different sign. And uh, I can glean a lot of information about your body 
by your chart. I can look at any organ, any oh. muscular skeletal system, and usually that shows up as well in your birth chart. So the birth chart is a map of the body as well as it is the psyche and the soul. And it's really all the same thing, and there's just different ways to describe it. Um, so as you may know, um, Dr. Stephanie Marengo and I published a book yes. on Simon & Schuster over the last year called Your Body and the Stars. So I collaborated with a doctor to really make all of this health astrological wisdom applicable to the everyday person and to share this kind of wisdom of the body. So it's health astrology and medical astrology has been a passion of mine and in a way reviving it and making it accessible to because there's incredible tools for healing in astrology as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm really struck by the fact that we forget that before the Internet, before modern medicine, before, 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 right? People really sought out wisdom in connecting what is happening in the stars with how to live in this earth plane. And they used the stars and they used astrology and they used so many of these ancient things. And I refer to them as ancient, um, you know, to live and survive. And you know what I'm struck by here, Becca, is that, you know, we forget that had they not tapped into what you do, tapped into what can be learned from astrology, you know, we're talking about an entire species that has been able to live, develop, expand and grow. And if you go back, this was done without all of modern medicine, all of modern knowledge, all of modern technology, right? So isn't there something to be said about tapping back in to these ancient lessons then to live in a contemporary world? I, I think that's what we're coming to now. We're, we've realized as a whole race that we've grown so far out of harmony with the earth. And, you know, in, in the way, I mean, really, the last couple hundred years, especially, um, you know, the Industrial Revolution and everything, this way of kind of pulling everything out of the earth. And, you know, the question is, is there, yeah, is there a way to live in, in greater harmony with this planet? And there certainly is. Um, cosmic cycles are the cycles of nature, are the cycles of sea life and human life. I mean, we everything truly breathes together. So it, growing now more than ever, I see there's a need to reconnect with the cosmic cycles and even something as simple in your life as incorporating the power of new moons, eclipses. Um, you know, in the ancient days, right, before TV and everything, people mm -hmm. would see an eclipse in the sky. And this was a great omen. And they would also tend to notice that around eclipse times, leaders would fall out of power or come into power. So major things were happening about around eclipses. And then they would also notice things that how come every time that Venus is rising there, another village is going to war. So yeah. for thousands of years, these cycles were documented and just observations made and the same observations made for so many thousand years. And it became this science, this art of astrology that we now have today. Um, but this is this is millennia of observation and just really relaying these things, writing them down. So it's, yeah. it's incredible, truly. Um, and I'm still in awe of it, you know, just to think that we all see the moon, right? Um, yeah. And that's actually a big focus of the workshop is your moon sign as well and getting to know that. But we all recognize our emotions can be heightened or it can be harder to sleep during a full moon. There's a bit of a buzz and intensity in the air. Um, but also all of the other planets have an effect too. And just because we don't see them doesn't mean that they don't affect our energetic beings. These, they all have a specific kind of magnetic pull. Um, so, you know, astrology is an yeah. ever evolving thing as well as we discover new planets too. Well, I want to talk about, you know, in terms of uh, not only the work that you do to, to, with the individuals, but also I want to talk about this idea that we touched upon for the upcoming WOW, uh, upcoming women and, and wisdom, cosmic signature. 
our cosmic sh signature creates a lifestyle to suit your soul. <clears throat> I know you've worked with countless people all over the planet, and you're going to be bringing this message in a full day workshop with people. Um, as a result of doing this work and as a result of the website, uh, excuse me, the workshop, people are going to have a new level of awareness. Can you talk about that soul signature and the revelation of that and what you've seen in some of the other folks you've worked with? Okay, great question. So, yeah, yeah I'm so excited about this workshop. It's called Your Cosmic Signature, Create the Lifestyle to Suit Your Soul. And it will be on uh, Saturday, February 18th at the conference in Seattle. And it's a full day from 9 to 5 p.m. So this is a workshop to attend that I would say is for you if you're interested in the world of self-realization and also transforming your life in a way that you can be more radiant and mostly more connected to your soul and who you really are. Mm -hmm. um, the, the chart is, is a map of what you came here to do on the planet. I believe that we each came here. We're each born for a purpose. And the earth just needs each of us to fully be who we are. And mm. sometimes that gets confused with yeah. all of these expectations and things that we feel like we're supposed to do in life. Um, but the chart is this beautiful map of each person's personal success. And what success is to each person is completely different. So, we're actually, as, as each attendee enters, um, they'll have sent in their birth information and each one will get a map of what I've created, a specific kind of chart, which is the key ingredients of your soul signature. And uh, the attendees will all learn how to interpret that and what that says about them. And also we'll do a great deal of partner work um, and we'll look into the year ahead. We'll also be focusing a lot on the moon sign and how in modern life that each, most people are ignoring their moon sign. Okay. Yeah. Most of us know our sun sign, right? We read yeah. horoscope or Capricorn or Aries. And this is very typical in the Western world. We ignore our core needs. We ignore our emotional needs. We ignore the subconscious, the inner layers of self. We don't necessarily create a lot of spaciousness in our life, right? No. <laughs> There's a lot of um, of ego and let me show the world what I've done. And um, often, you know, we, we have a culture now where so many people are sick and tired and yeah. the health is, is horrible for the yeah. most part. And a lot of this has to do with, I feel personally, that we're ignoring key elements of our being that are in the soul signature. So what I do in this workshop is have a very large focus on the moon sign and getting to know how to feed your mood sign, moon sign, what lifestyle, what food, what kinds of exercises, what kind of ingredients do you really need to give you optimal health and well-being and to make you radiant? And that's yeah. totally different for each person. There's yeah, not one you know, prescription. Let's just you know? Yeah, let's talk about this for a minute, because there are some of us that have a certain sun sign, then we have a rising sign, right? And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, we get to the moon, and it's like, wait a minute, okay, sun sign Sagittarius, Taurus rising, and my moon's in Capricorn with three other planets, Uh and it's hard to interpret what that means, but the moon has a very particular role. And it may not be in the same sign as your son, which a lot of people don't really, really make the make the association. Can you talk about that? Because the sun has a role, then the moon has a role. Right. So we can look at it like this, the interplay of sun, moon, and rising. And we might okay. have all heard of that great trifecta. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So the nice. sun is pretty much like your core archetype, what you came here to do. So, Dr. Pat, you are a Sagittarius son. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Right. So you came here on the planet to do the Sagittarius thing, which is to expand the parameters, adventure, think beyond, and share information. New ways of sharing information, adventure, travel, explorations of the mind, as well as the land. 
as well as the land. So this is a side of great exploration. So you are a life uh, explorer, adventurer. Does that resonate with you at all? It does. And, and, and I, I, want, I can't wait to hear what the other part is because the okay. bottom line is that if that were true, I would be exploring in the world and wouldn't be able to sit down and do a full hour show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where the rising sign and the moon sign come in. So uh, is it that you have a Taurus rising? That's yeah, that's right. Okay. So the rising I'm not sign, even, I don't even know what that means. Sure. So the rising sign is the constellation that appears on the eastern horizon mm-hmm. at the moment that you were born. And I kind of, I look at that as the vehicle for the sun sign, like the operating system. So your Sagittarius sun, that seems very fiery and exploratory, is housed in a very earthy Taurus vehicle that's well-made, that also is looking at the long-term and legacy stability as well. Mm. Um, So all of these ideas and all of these ways of sharing information are packaged into something that is actually very grounded and focused Mm. on the long-term and um, the beauty and the quality uh, setting roots in the earth and strong foundations for the future. Mm. So this is a very grounded rising sign you have. So this okay, combination, that, that explains a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> the combination of earth and fire is typically a leadership combination. So you are a leader. You are a thought leader. When I see earth and fire in a chart like this, I see somebody who has the the ideas and the creativity and the drive of fire, and yet you also have the practicality, the resourcefulness, and the know-how to manifest them. And that's Mm -hmm. the leadership quality. And truly, you are a leader. Well, you know, it's fascinating about it because I develop as well, and this is maybe I think what you're going to help folks with, is that there can be this inner conflict which goes on in me. And uh, I call it an inner conflict. I don't know what else to call it. But, you know, sometimes I want to get on a plane and just go to Hawaii and -hmm. just say, I I need a vacation. And the reality is that what I really am am needing to do is sit here and work with the rest of the team and finish the completion of the new network. So there is that dynamic that goes on. How do you help people? And I know you're going to share that. You, I know you're going to work with folks at the workshop. This is exciting. This is, this is, this workshop is going to be so, so very fun. Um, and I know that this is the work you're going to do because I think that sometimes we run into this inner dilemma. Maybe you can talk to that inner dilemma. That's, that's a great question because it's true. Sometimes there's all of these varying parts of our charts, which mm-hmm. the attendees of the workshop will also realize that seem to be conflicting. Um, right. So like we have this part of us and then we have that part of us and, and how do they coexist? Um, so we're actually going to be focused on solutions in the workshop right. and we're going to be acting things out also, like acting out the, what could be sometimes the conflict. And I'll show people what that looks like, and they'll get into partner work at some point, too. And then we'll also talk about solutions, because every chart has a key. Every chart has a way to really unlock it and fully break it open into the the fuller expression. And sometimes it needs to get shaken up a little bit. Sometimes we need to shake up what we know. I think change is really good. I think taking risks can be a great thing sometimes because getting out of your comfort zone in certain ways. So we will be doing that. We will be pushing people to their edges um, Mm -hmm. in the way that's necessary to help bring out more of the light of who they are. And And uh, the reason I bring this up is um, there are several reasons I bring it up, um, but, but mostly to say that I use the word um, challenge Um, But what I know is that there is an interplay of energy that happens for me. And the the thing that I think is, quote, the challenge is usually a doorway that I have to figure out somehow how to open into the next level of what I truly desire in life. And, you know, had I known you and been able to work with you, 
for the past 14 years, it may not have become, you know, quote, a challenge. Now I know better, right, as you just described. Isn't this part of what you're going to be doing at the upcoming workshop to help people recognize the opportunity sometimes that may be waiting right around the corner and how can our moon, how can who we are help get us there? Right. Our challenges are 100% our gift. And sometimes it's the art of learning how to translate that into a gift. Nice. And a lot of it, exactly, is the way that we see it. And perspective is everything, too. Mm. Um, if you think about, you know, uh, like architecture, you can view something from above, from behind, from beneath. And a lot of what I do as an astrologer is, I simply give people perspective on the chart and then they're able to see themselves in a new way and their life in a new way. And that frees up room to make change. So a lot of what we'll be doing too is creating the space to make the changes in our life mm -hmm. um, and learning where that is for each person. Uh, so in this workshop as well, each person will get a pretty much a whole read on who they are what's going on now in their lives and their greatest gifts to bring forth into the world and also what their challenges would be, may be, but I never like to leave it at challenges. I always go into how can we translate those challenges to gifts because that's the key part. We have to be able to make that translation. Um, so the attendees will certainly get a lot of value from the workshop and yeah. great material to go home with as well. I love it. Uh, you know, I want to make sure we're telling people where to go to register for it, if we could. And also, uh, let's make sure they know how to get to your website. Let's make sure they know how to get a copy of your book. Um, because first of all, the book's fabulous. And this workshop is going to help so many people right now. Um, at quite a few who are trying to make sense of what's going on in the world. And I, and, and I know that the work that you do gives us sort of this introspection in who we are and, and who we can become. So please, how do we get a copy of the book? How do we find out um, uh, more about you? And also, how do they register for the workshop? Okay, so I'll start with, uh, I guess on my website, there's a few things. On my website, which is called mypathastrology.com. The focus is on finding your path in life. And uh, I also want to add to that that no path is a mistake that you make, too. There's That's right. Always, <laughs> we always look at this, and there's always a reason for every turn. It's all part of the Great Symphony. Uh, so the website is called My Path. I'll spell that M Y P A T H astrology.com. And on mypathastrology.com, you will be able to purchase the book called Your Body and the Stars, which is a thorough body scan. That this book I wrote with a doctor, Stephanie Marengo. We go from head to toe. We talk about the metaphysical, the physical, and also healing techniques for each area of the body, too. Um, whether the, the problem at hand feels to be uh, emotional, psychological, or physical. So that book is an amazing kind of go-to reference guide as well. If you're if you're a yoga teacher or in any kind of energetic healing or really just wondering more about astrology um, or the body. Now, the conference, oh, yeah, so um, all of my social media is on my site as well, and it's basically everything, which is My Path Astrology, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now, nice. the conference um, is womenofwisdom.org, and my workshop will be on Saturday. So there's so many other great speakers too. So I'll definitely yeah. be attending some of the other speakers who are oh, yeah. good friends of mine and people I've also wanted to see for a while. Uh, though, if you do want to learn astrology and learn how to create the lifestyle to suit your soul based on your birth chart, my workshop will be February 18th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I would be so excited to meet the guests there. Um, make sure you do uh, email in your birth information as well prior. Yes. Um, and it's womenofwisdom.org where you can sign up for the conference also. I love it. Well, I know it's going to be so much fun. I'm so thrilled to hear, too, 
that you're going to also have folks work with each other because that be- that can become so enlightening as well, don't you think? I mean, I, I, I can't see myself very well. Um, and so it's always good to get some help from a buddy. Definitely. Partner work is very powerful. And I mean, I've had some of my biggest breakthroughs, I think, through <laughs> other, through relationships. You know, it's hard to have them if you're just sitting in your house by yourself or whatever. So um, we'll be doing all kinds of activities and workshopping with each other and in groups. And uh, yeah, people will learn a lot and gain wisdom to really create patterns that may last for a long time in their life. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for today. And I look forward to seeing you at uh, the upcoming Women of Wisdom um, event. And for those of you out there, you can go to womenofwisdom.org. We're going to take a short break, everybody, and and more with uh, me. And uh, we're just going to kick it up. New school, street, smart spirituality. We'll be right back. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.